Jason Cooper split pushing hmm. opens up a huge, huge potential here. Fanny, Popal and Cooper, of course, Glue being the distraction. Evos Legends from the drafts is looking strong. They have a composition that really is basically made here to play around the Sicilian. Mm -hmm. They have the Rafaela that adds a uh, utility. They have someone to cover up in that Popo and Koopa and two people to distract. But like I said, this is the thing about Aura Fire. You don't know what they're going to draft. You ban the Paquito, you ban the Aulus thinking that they want to play that in the jungle. But no, he comes out with the box show once again. I mentioned this. This is Pai's favorite hero back in MPL Season 8. And it seems like it's still his favorite here in Season mm -hmm. 9, debuting here once again for Aura Fire. What are, you, what, are your, what are your thoughts at this point? I really do want to understand. Did he pick the Bakcha because of the glue or...? Well, there are a lot of, there's a lot of healing and sustain from the side of Evo's Legends, so True. the Bakcha pick is already valuable. There is a lot of catch potential with the Popo and Koopa and a Burst Mage combo. We've seen this a lot in the previous season. So having two frontliners will have a lot, uh, it will give Aura a lot of possibilities to actually open up the map. And of course, with the Bakcha extra crowd control, that will be yet another factor for the Fani to consider before diving into the backline of Aura Fire. Oh, hella nasty. Let's just jump though into the Land of Dawn for our game. Number one match, number two, EVOS Legends taking on Aura Fire. Still with Goni, Mirko, and as well as Arashi here leading the game. Hoo-wee! Ooh-wee! <laughs> let's get straight into the game here, Goni. Um, let's, let's take a look at the matchups once more here. For me personally, I... Okay, predictions-wise, I'll have to go with Aura Fire. I think the draft is really creative here, even though EVOS Legends' composition can win. I'm not saying they can't, but I think Aura Fire just has a better game plan here. I gotta be honest with you, composition-wise, I feel like Aura Fire, they lack damage, they lack burst. Sure, they have points, but besides that, they do not have enough right now. Keep first, they already went 3 to 1. Uh-oh, hi here. With the shield unit, it will not be able to escape because first blood by Samsung Galaxy A series will be claimed the hands of first. Day. Yeah, I mean, ugh, dude, you gotta be careful here in this type of game when you are up against a Fanny. She clears the lane, she clears the jungle really, really fast. And when it comes to mobility, moving across the jungle, yeah, I'm pretty sure she is the fastest. So, hi, a little bit too greedy there, miscalculating a bit on how fast Fanny can get there. But in the top side, though, Kabuki's been doing amazing. Usually, when we see this matchup, Arashi, we don't really see the Clint winning in the first three levels. Obviously, because Clover on the Popo and Koopa, it's essentially a 2v1. So Clint usually has a harder time, but Bodiva is there to actually make a difference in the situation. In the mid lane, I think Aura Fire with the Geef has more potential for rotations and actually pickoffs with that three-man roam squad. Again, having a fighter in the jungle allows you to be a, lot, be a lot more aggressive, and that is exactly what Aura is going for. Aura Fire here, Shield Unity. Goes on towards first take, first take here with the cables already Ooh. slicing and dicing on towards high. But both junglers using their retribution here. So Wild Turtle is up. So interesting approach for, from both of the junglers. Yeah, a very interesting approach from both of the junglers, but I do want to take a deep dive maybe at this pick from high. With the Bakshia, not only do you get that mobility, but also you can kind of counter the healing coming in from all of the members here. Oh, Sicilian gets Ooh. caught though. Sicilian gets caught here. Quite is the target. Fluffy will deal out damage. Oh, in the backside is actually high. Gets taken now. It will be traded though. One for one. A high for right. Yep. That's a, a a good trade, but also kind of not. I mean, it's an equal trade for both of the teams, but the thing is, it was actually the side of Krite. Krite yeah. got picked off for high. Um, I I'm going to have to say it's more worth it for the side of Aurafire here, because, again, it's a Baksha in the jungle. Uh, if he goes, if he go, you know, gets behind, even if he's ahead, it, it won't really matter that much. He's always going to be tanking. He always has that utility, whereas Krite, he needs to get this early game going pretty well for himself to be able to snowball to that mid game. Yeah, first stick here, moving aggressively on towards high, high. Takes a lot of damage with Godiva uh -oh. assisting him, but first stick oh. gets outplayed here. He gets taken oh. down as Baksha survives that one. Wild Turtle is up. Perhaps our fire could build their momentum right here, right now and take 
the turtle as well. That's that, why. That is the big front to back potential from Aura Fire. If they don't get a good jump onto the back line, Fairsy can't really expend all of the effort, time, skills, cooldowns, and energy onto frontline members like Godiva or High. He needs to make sure that it lands onto the right targets. And if Aura Fire positions properly, that is something that's quite difficult to achieve. That's the reason I prefer Aura Fire's draft compared to Evo's Legends. I feel like they have a lot of different tools that just does the, the job really well, like Godiva can engage, Hai can just follow it up, and they can all take the damage. Plus, Fanny's gonna have a real hard time getting to that back line. Hai can just soak up all the damage he needs to, and it's gonna be A-OK. -okay. It's Baksha in the jungle, like, uh, like I've been saying for the past four minutes. Eve now with the enchanted talisman early on, knowing that the utility, the slows that will uh, you know will be hindering the die from Evo's Legends will come out critical. And of course, with more real world manipulations, there's a lot more chances for them to get a pick just like this. Real world manipulation has been bounced high, claiming that turtle anti mage and first sick joining the fight high takes Ooh. a lot, a lot of damage. Anti mage though, oh in the back side, first sick low HP will not be able to survive. Anti mage takes a ride with high here with that shield unity with Rex. In the front line, will not be able to survive. Facehugger claiming yet another kill. Two men down for EVOS Legends. Oh my god, a nasty team fight for a side of Aura Fire. Like I said, they burn all their resources literally on the turtle. But it doesn't matter. They just are too tanky, too sustainable. All the damage you throw at them, it's not going to matter unless the Pop One Koopa actually joins the fight. But Kabuki is doing such a good job. Basically, shutting. This Pop and Koopa down, that's something that's just unreal. This is the potential, the rock, paper, scissor matchup in the jungle. Assassins don't win against fighters, and Assassins wins against marksmen. So the draft is, the draft is really so good for Aura Fire. Oh, Aura Fire doing a great job there, forcing the flicker from Popo and Koopa, creating that space. Blue and Kabuki will claim a turret top side here. A game plan goes, Aura Fire is leading Evos. They are driven. By if, uh, our uh, game plan. Looking at the items now, though, both teams are still kind of even. But Kabuki opting for an early armor purchase to make sure that she doesn't get he doesn't get pressured by Fursic too hard in these fights. And Fursic adjusts uh, very quickly and gets a malefic word to counter that almost instantly. Yeah, I don't know about this, man. Talking about the, the game plans right now, Hi, he's already starting his move very aggressively into the enemy base, into enemy jungle, my bad. And th the thing is, this is what he needs to do. Just keep on doing this. It, it doesn't matter. Yes, you don't get the purple buff, but you've already bought so much time. First, it gets caught. Uh-oh, first, it gets caught by Gold Diva. And there you go, gets taken down three times in the land of Dawn. Evos, though, they are struggling, trying to find compensation here. Fluffy takes a lot of damage, still Ooh. surviving this. Oh, never mind, Zang Claws. Nice connection. Go Diva might be nice because Clover takes a lot, deals a lot of damage, but there you go. Bright with the kill. Two for two. Two for one for that trade. Uh, two for one. But they do get the turret in the bottom side, and this is what I'm trying to say here. It doesn't matter how many kills Evo's Legends keep on getting across the map if they don't get objectives. Aura Fire's way of playing is just distracting you, so yeah, you take these fights, but you don't focus on objectives, and it's working so far. Remember, the sustainability, the dive potential is going to be huge. Trite gets killed but he's not going to be able to dish out that damage uh, if he gets dove on. Yeah, I think it's yeah. important for Aura Fire to actually push their tempo and for Evo's Legends, they need to actually pay attention to the cooldowns of the crowd control because that is what is you know shutting down Fair Six so hard right now. Every time he goes in, everything is just ready to just punish his aggression. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, it, it is still all Aura Fire here. Economy-wise and as well as map pressure right now, they are looking for to secure that neutral objective here. Uh, realizing that Rex is also half HP, Aura Fire looking very, very, you know, pre prepared, well prepared here, taking on Evos Legends. And look, Hyde didn't even use the retribution to get that <laughs> that turtle, so they're going to contest for this purple. Again, Ooh. baiting everyone to come here. Oh. Wow, what they do? Clover right now with a low HP people and Koopa will he survive this one? Godiva did not connect as first thing. Moves in, slicing, and dancing. But Clover in the back side gets taken down. Trader with high though. First thing wants more. Fluffy might be the next target. Face Sugger and Kabuki is there to cover him, but first thing looks on towards Godiva, who is not able to escape. Flicker wasn't there, and there you go. Uh, one for two. One for two, but again, Arashi Kabuki is hitting on this turret. They're dishing out damage, the right amount of damage, and they're not even going to lose anything except for that topside turret.
I think that was a slight mistake from Aura Fire there. We see that Godiva, in a sense, almost tunnels to make sure that Clover gets taken down. Destroyed. But his role in these fights isn't to go for the kill. It's to make sure that Fersic on that funny does not get to play the game plan that he wants. In that fight, he went and used his card control onto the Popo and Koopa. And as a result, Fersic was able to do so much damage to the backline. That is something that Aura Fire needs to make sure does not happen again. Yeah, I feel like Aura Fire here. I, I, I feel... Evos Legends, I'm quite surprised here with two purifies on Rex and Quite. Aura Fire could sh still show their potential in their composition with on that Kufra. And why do you think that is? Yeah, I mean, taking a look at the damage dealt, we can see that Facehugger has just had such a huge impact in this game. Quite and Ferris, I guess they deal damage, but we gotta remember that they've been dealing this damage onto the front lines. Uh, Facehugger has been free, Clint has been free, and when you have this much face, Whoa. Godiva goes in. Uh, Godiva goes in, does not commit just yet. Rex with half HP. He needs to side here. Oh, now, full HP right now. Kaido with that shield unity, trying to invade the purple buff. The next one towards Fersic. Fersic, Wait. what will he do? Oh, Kabuki is free hitting in the back side there. Ready trying to give over, but a high. Soaks up a lot of damage, and Fersic goes crazy in the back side. Fluffy by the target. Fluffy with that extra shield. Ooh. Renabi has survived. Double kill for that Cecilian as Fersic. Jumps away, flies away, and Anti-Mage, he wants more. Rex is there to, su to support him. Kabukin as well as Facehugger will be able to deny the rotation from side of Evos, but it will be a three for nothing. Evos Legends finally get the traded that they need. This is the problem with the side of Aura Fire. Even though they get the early game, they don't use this properly. A lot of the times, they're just way too aggressive. They dive into the enemy purple buff for no reason at all except for the, yeah we want to steal it away but at this point do you really need to steal it away Fersic before that fight was two and three he was super behind just go for the objectives the neutral objectives the big objectives like turtle I mean uh, like Lord or the turrets yeah and honestly they actually played so aggressively and as a result I think one of their members just felt looked so stranded all the way in the front alone and as we mentioned Aura Fire's composition is a team fight front to back composition they need to be sticking together to get the full benefit out of this team composition so they need to make sure that they played a lot slower and if they don't get to catch the quote-unquote priority target, that's still fine because they don't have to risk anything. As long as they can make sure that the members of EVOS Legends can't dive towards that backline, they're golden. Here's the thing what I don't like about the composition from Aura Fire, all right? Their wave clear potential is so weak. Mm. And looking at the items, what do you have to say, Arashi? So far, there is the Ice Queen Swan on to face Hugger. So there is still some wave clear there. But as you mentioned, with two frontliners, with two fighters, the damage from far away, the clearing, will lose out to a Cecilion, as well as the, you know, the low cooldown from oh, Fersic. But he goes in very deep here. Fersic! What? With the mistake! What was he trying to do there? He goes in, trying to target, of course, face Hugger, but... Lord's uh, available. Godiva is there, and Lord is up. High with the lead, Facehugger here opening up the real world manipulation. Oh, Diva gets taken out with one bad impact. Fluffy, Fluffy. will find some compensation, taking down Clover. Fluffy will not survive with the synergy. Rex and Kreitz high once more here. Shield unity connects Rex. Will he be able to get taken down a high? Okay. Is there? Oh, Kabuki with a surprise attack. Rex taking oh, a lot of damage. There's Raphael. I will not be able. Killing spree for Kabuki. Fearsick that. Oh my god. I can't. I'm sorry, man. That was a huge blunder. It almost cost them the game. Luckily, Cry was able to position himself properly in that final and actually carried the team to an equal, equal standings in terms of kills. But man, oh man, I don't know what it is. Maybe he didn't have enough food here. Grab food will be giving him some some good nutrition, I feel yeah. like, but I'm still just so speechless. He goes in 1v5. He needs to understand. Look uh. at the CC. You have Fluffy on this Edith that just can instantly knock you up. You have the bouncing ball, my guy. Please. This... Uh, oh, I thought it was a different first yesterday, but we're seeing the exact same, possibly even worse aggressively in Season 8. Maybe the whole success from the early game from Evo's Legends. From Season 8, sorry. Yeah, I, I, I guess just makes Fersic just too, a bit too feisty, but he can't just go into the jungle without any intel like that. He can go very deep, as we've seen in the past few team fights, but he needs to understand that he needs to wait for the right moment. He just goes in like that, where everyone is grouped up together and ready to pile on the CC on him. That is not going to be a good time at all. All right. Out of fire here, already committing on towards this Lord Rex opening up vision. All for sake goes in. Be careful. Oh! In the front side, Fluffy gets taken out. Face with the real world manipulation. So effective. But take a look at the Lord. He's already 
corner, HPM, Kabuki in the back side, gets they shut it down. Hi will not be able to do anything in the front side. Facehugger might be next as Anti-Mage and Rex is already hovering on Facehugger, forces to flicker as Evos will look to claim the Lord, the Enhanced Lord. Fluffy is not tanky enough. He can't be the one in the front side. Conceal though. Conceal play here, trying to look something. Evos still with five. Godiva already trying to give some sort of a vision, but not... Uh, no commitments just yet for Team Fight and Team Mage here. First, it wants Face Hugger already dealing a lot of damage. Face Hugger still surviving with no flicker here as the Lord Blue will be claimed, will go Lord. into the hands of Evo's Legends. Now, with the Lord secured for Evo's Legends, they have the option of using the Lord as a sixth member of their team and actually split up the very strong front to back composition from Aura Fire. If they're able to do so, though, there won't be enough crowd control in. You know, there will be always someone that will fall victim to the mobility and high DPS coming in from Fairsick. Looking at the items now, smart itemization for going for the rose gold meat here, as well as a bit more armor to make sure that he doesn't get bursted down. If he can last for a bit longer, the Bloodlust Axe will allow him to sustain up all that damage, provided he does not get hit with all the crowd control that Aura is saving up for him. Uh, this is exactly what I said in the drafts as well. The reason I actually preferred Evo's Legends in the first phase of the draft was because they have the Fanny and the Sicilian. Fanny will create so much space for the Sicilian and that's exactly what's happening here in the 14th minute of the game. Ever since that 10th minute, actually, we've seen this happen. Aura Fire struggle in team fights when they don't get a pickoff beforehand. And Sicilian have, has been free hitting because, again, Sicilian can hit everyone on Aura Fire, but the longest range hero on Aura Fire, which is Clint, can't, I mean, technically Yves, can't get Red into the, 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 the sights, basically, or the range of Sicilian. Yeah, I completely agree with you, and. Out of fire here, already still managing to find Lord up top, still healthy. Anti mage trying to find something. Oh Fluffy, oh, take a look at that bad impact. Fluffy, will he be able to survive? Oh, great. Real world manipulation here opened up. Godiva did not connect as Out of fire Red looks to defend on top side, but what side will be Evos Legends picking up a base turret? Five for five here. No members, no casualty. A smart, smart offense, but a better defense. Fortunately for Aura Fire, they do, again, have the counter to an assassin, so they were able to use high to match Fairsick. If there was, it was anyone else, they probably wouldn't have taken down, but now big engage for Evo's oh, Legends! Oh, Sanguine Gloss connects on George 2, go deep by high, taking a soaking lot of damage, Rex claiming up a kill, take a look at the back side, Fairsick, dealing a lot of damage, distracting, and also shoo, wing away, Aura Fire members for stands as EVOS Legends looks to close the gap. It's Cried versus the world at this point. As long as he gets covered, it's not going to be good. Low Diva here, trying to look something, trying to defend face hugger. Oh, first sick, almost gets taken out as Fluffy. Will not be able to defend top side. anti and Rex being the frontliner that they are, just looks for another base turret top side. Zero turrets for side of our fire here. What can they do to defend? Well, this is where it gets quite difficult for EVOS. Of course, with the Lord in their hands, they can probably get that win. In fact, the real win probability by the Samsung Galaxy A series is 68% for EVOS Legends. If they can get the Lord, they can probably brute force their way to actually end the game. But without that, now they have to actually fight a very strong front-to-back composition in the base without any potential for them to flank around and catch members of Aura Fire off guard. They will have to bank it on a fight near the Lord right now or, again, risk uh, going for the fast end with the Lord and avoiding the team fight completely. So for, for me, basically right here, what Aura Fire needs to do is just put one member on defense, protect Kabuki and face hugger from that Fanny. But the thing is, it's really hard with Amp Team Mage also basically supporting him every single time. The thing is, what Aura Fire needs to do is just completely uh, nullify that back line. Let's see what, what they're able to do here. Oh my god, Lord. Four side of EVOS Legends once again with zero base turrets here. The question still stand. Will be will they be able to defend this one? Because I feel like right, uh, the damage, man, the damage from the Sicilian is just too huge. What do you think? Will be this be the final uh, end push? The thing is, there's a lot of damage coming in from Kryt on the Sicilian, but he is still outranged by Facehugger, who is by no means, uh, you know, behind. He is 2-0-8, zero deaths so far. If he can get a real good reward manipulation, he can zone away the Sicilian and buy some time for the DPS like Kabuki, like Fluffy, to actually deal enough damage and take out the Lord before Evo's Legends can go for that fast end towards the crystal. They need to go for a huge play right now, but they need to get Kryt down. Already an engage right now, Gani. Yeah, Hai here already at half HP, not looking good. Oh. Okay, there's an Immortal, but Hai gets taken back. Hai with the Immortal 
will pop. Mercy gets taken. Oh no, Persic will not be able to get that kill, but four man standing, four man defending Clover. Ooh. And France looks to close the gap. As take a look at the base, it is too exposed. Evos Legends takes game number one. Oh man, what what a game, honestly. Like if we're talking about the game, that was a very uh It was very weird. It was a very weird victory, yeah. I feel like, because uh I, I'm just quite baffled here by what transpired in that game. Yeah, here's well, the thing. Sure, composition-wise, it felt like uh, I'm sorry for cutting you. It felt like mistakes from both of the teams. Like, Absolutely, yeah. I feel like the reason Aurifier was able to win in the early phase is because Ferrisic made a lot of mistakes, mm -hmm. and the reason Aurifier lost was also because they took too many fights and made mistakes.